by Madame Yukon and came to greet you personally. The news that you will be the ringmaster in place of Lieutenant Yun Ching has been made public, Miss March. Just now, as I passed the contestants' hall, I overheard them all discussing this news. The most common question I heard was, who is March 7th? If they ask you this, how will you introduce yourself? Do you have something prepared? Try to bluff like that, at least make it convincing. <laughs> I see you are both quite relaxed. Impressive! Give me danger you face. Miss Yun Lee's contestant information was registered for the war dance a long time ago. However, as a last minute entry, the Skyfaring Commission has taken care of the necessary procedures for you, Miss March 7th. Please. Follow this path. The contestant hall is just up ahead. Thank you, Miss Shikwe. Come, let's take a look around the contestant hall. So, <laughs> this is the contestant hall. Oh, there are so many people. March. Before the war dance begins, allow me to give you one more lesson. My grandfather always told me that a weapon mimics its master. That means that a person's weapon will reflect their habits and personality. You've seen me wield old metal before, haven't you? Tell me, what did you observe from that? Master Yun Li's old metal is taller than a person. Being able to wield a weapon like that must mean that you have ridiculous strength, right? Observing the weapon that your opponent uses, assessing what kind of battle skills they excel at, and where their weaknesses lie, is the key to victory in battle. A shockingly heavy sword like mine, for example, is obviously not suited for a long, drawn-out battle. So, it would be best to find a way to drag the battle out. Why would you tell me your weakness? That's the only way to ensure that we have a fair fight, don't you think? I don't want to see you go and lose to someone else, after all. Now is a perfect opportunity to learn how to evaluate your opponents. Let's use the people here in the contestants' hall to practice. If you know yourself and know your enemy, you will not lose in a hundred battles. Self and know the enemy. Let's see, who should I ask first? Ugh. I am not used to wearing clothes like this at all. Oh, you're March 7th. The stand in for Lieutenant Yun Cheng, correct? That's right. And you are? As you can see, I am the journalist entrusted with interviewing contestants on site. I see the Skyfaring Commission has really gone all out as the host. Interesting. That's right! A big event like this just can't go ahead without a few of us running around. <laughs> Since the competition is getting started, could I ask you some questions that are on my mind? Great! First, the question that is on everyone's minds. Lieutenant Yancheng is not appearing in today's war dance. This is just gossip from unreliable sources, but I hear that Lieutenant Yancheng is seriously injured. Is this true? Oh. 
Well, then what is the real reason? Seriously? Um, all right. I understand. Once the war dance begins, you will be challenged by master swordsmen from many different worlds, Miss March 7th. Are there any that you're looking forward to facing in particular? May I ask who that might be? The talented swordswoman from the Xianzhou Juming, Miss Yun Li. I look forward to a spectacular battle between you two. Thank you very much for accepting my interview. Much appreciated. I came here because I wanted to meet the great Lieutenant Yan Ching I've heard so much about and finally cross blades with him myself. Who would have imagined that he would take a disciple and have her be the ringmaster in his place? This is no more than running away from a fight and is a great dishonor to the Yao Ching. This last minute replacement, March 7th, who exactly is she? take part in the Ringmaster's Challenge, too? That's right! I'm the March 7th that everyone's been talking about! What? You're March 7th? Don't worry. I'm a newbie Swordmaster who's only been practicing the art of swordplay for half a month. March 7th. Standing before you is a seasoned Cloud Knight who has practiced swordsmanship for over 200 years. Tricking the opponent into underestimating me is a valid tactic too, right? She's just a little girl that has only just started training. Why was she chosen as a contestant? Was there something you wanted to ask me? Ah, yes. Yeah, this is just a regular Cloud Knight Devastator Glaive. Oh, I understand what's going on this March 7th and Miss Yun Lee. <laughs> I'm actually not a contestant. I'm just here as a security guard. It's all right. I can't bear to watch other people make things awkward. So I always try to keep the conversation going. But then I'm the one who ends up making things awkward. I've gotten used to There are still many guests arriving here. Please be cautious. Understood. The first round of the war dance is about to begin. Are you feeling okay, March? Me? I'm fine. As soon as I saw all these people gathered here, I suddenly felt weirdly relaxed. Looking at these contestants, I suddenly feel a lot calmer for some reason. I understand why you wanted me to know myself and know my enemy. I don't feel as nervous as I did before. So, do you want to go out and see the ring? Very well. Go and get your intel.
enough knowing the enemy for now. Come on, I want to see what the ring looks like. for now. Come on, I want to see what the ring looks like. I heard that a swordmaster from the Shenzhou Druming is going to challenge Lieutenant Yan Qing at this war dance. Who do you think will win in the fight? Can you give me your analysis? Lieutenant Yan Qing, obviously. His swordsmanship is on a whole other level. I was fortunate enough to see him in person, using his flying swords to capture a criminal in Starskip Haven. I reckon just a few swift strikes and... Ahem. <clears throat> Goodness! Isn't that the Sienjo Ju Ming's contestant, Miss Yun Li? Just a few swift strikes, and the Juming Swordmaster will have him on his knees. around the ship. This was also part of Grandpa's orders. I wonder how Master Yan Qing is doing over there. Hey, focus. General, report. The teams are in position. The Skyfaring Commission has taken control of the Starskiff lanes. Activate all side cranes and have them scan everyone coming in and out of the port. Remain vigilant at all times. Any suspicious movements must be suppressed as quickly as possible before the situation gets out of hand. Yes, General. You two, follow me. What's a signal's nearby, but we lost contact just a moment ago. Could that mean... He will be fine. Cloud Knights, search for the target.
All of you, get out of my way. Wait. Don't go any closer. General, I failed you. That mad dog left me here as... A declaration of war. That's right. I've been holding back the urge to slit his throat all this time. Well... Lord Hule ordered us to remain here, just to see. If you, the great Merlin's Claw, mortal enemy of the Forest, are able to join him in a little hunting game. Hunting is not a game. It is a battle of life and death. Are you ready for your death, abomination? Save your breath. Oh, that's better. Okay. I wasn't able to save Zhao Chao. Hule was more cunning and powerful than I imagined. Tell me, how is he planning to declare this war against me? With a one-on-one -on -one duel? Or with a hostage exchange, maybe? Hule is planning on attacking the bustling streets of the Xianzhou Lawfu. What did you just say? Impossible. Even if there is still undercover Borison that we haven't sniffed out, Hule can't have more than a few dozen people. How is he planning on simultaneously attacking the streets of the Sienjo Lafu? He has an ace up his sleeve. Hule's body holds a plague mark passed down through generations of Borison. I've seen him convert a Foxy into a Borison wolf trooper with my own eyes. This is Hule's declaration of war. His blood. It can cause Foxians to rapidly transform and lose their minds. He has passed his blood to his minions and is planning to spread it across the law foo and stir up panic. <laughs> he wants to encircle us in one fell swoop. This beast is truly unpredictable. Contact the Skyfaring Commission and the Cloud Knights right away. Have them enforce a traffic ban and order all Foxians to remain indoors until further notice. The moment you see your enemy's declaration of war, it means that they have already begun to take action. But if Hule succeeds in getting this panic to spread... Do you remember what I told you before? Hunting is about thinking the same way as your prey, not just mindlessly chasing after them. What Hule wants is to see everyone on the Lawfu descend into panic. He wants to see us lose our minds and waste our limited manpower scouring every inch of the Lawfu for signs of an attack until we exhaust ourselves. It's like that party game that the people of the Yaoqing love to play. They hide an object under one of several bowls, then move the bowls around and have you guess which one the object is underneath. The way I see it, this is all nothing more than misdirection. <sighs> no matter what Hule does, there is one truth that cannot be changed. 
He is trapped aboard the Sienjo Lothu. The only way for him to escape is to find a ship. Right now, the only ship he'd be able to see is the Sky Splitter. In his eyes, that ship is full of countless hostages. That would be the best place for him to go. So, that will also be our final battlefield. But if we're wrong about this, if he goes somewhere else, or if he does as he said he would, and his minions infect the Foxians everywhere with wolf blood, what do we do then? Are we just supposed to abandon those less likely locations? This is another lesson that you must learn outside of swordplay. Weighing your options and making a decision. There are always questions that we will ask ourselves, but never be able to answer. Before making a decision, we must destroy any hesitation that we are holding on to. Once we make a decision, we must fight off any regrets. There is a chance that we will make the wrong decision and allow our allies to be sacrificed in vain. There is a chance that we will predict our enemies' movements correctly, get underestimate their strength, and be overwhelmed in battle. But being lost in hesitation and failing to take any action will always be more harmful than taking the wrong path. We must make a decision, no matter what. Everyone, listen up. I will personally take charge of Starskiff Haven, evacuate the people, and prepare for any possible attacks. I will do my best to ensure that things are safe on the ground. Nameless, please lend us your strength as you did when the Ambrosial Arbor was reborn. I need you and Wildza to go in search of Zhao Cho. General! Please entrust me with the safety of the Sky Splitter. I was originally meant to participate in the tournament, so now it is only right that I return to the Sky Splitter. Kule does come to attack the Sky Splitter. Lieutenant Yan Ching, I need you to hold him there until I am able to arrive. Please rest assured, General. If he dares step foot on the Sky Splitter, I, Yan Ching, swear on the blade in my hands that he shall not escape. Cloud Knights, the Borsen have arrogantly decided to challenge us on Sienjo territory. They vow that they will unleash a bloodbath along the streets of the Sienjo. The unarmed civilians of the Sienjo and countless visitors from afar are under our protection. Let me ask you, as Cloud Knights, will we allow the Borsen to succeed with their plan? On your guard. Calling Starskip Haven. Have all Cloud Knights be on full alert for Borson attacks. Seychelles, the ports of Starskip Haven are crawling with wolf like creatures. They're moving fast. Hold them back. I will be there immediately. You are Faisal. Madam Yukong, after 30 years, we find ourselves fighting side by side once more. It's been a while since I've let loose. A short respite, then time for the next fight.
respite, then time for the next fight. Skip Haven. But it seems that there are fierce battles being waged at both the Exalting Sanctum and Arum Alley. I will prepare a Star Skiff. We cannot allow the fighting to continue. This is now a race against time to stop this farce that Hule has created. I know Zhao Cho always wants me to know my limits and not get carried away, but now is the time to bring this to a swift end. Contact the Exalting Sanctum. Tell them if they see a light in the sky, all units are to retreat immediately. Madam Yukong, lend me your bow. this way. Every time she hits the battlefield, she makes a mess like this. She didn't even leave a single survivor to get intel from. One of these men must have known about Hule and Zhao Cho's whereabouts. That was one of Fei Shao's arrows. Who knows what she used as an arrow to fire all the way over here. Take a good look around. If you can find one or two Borisin that aren't dead yet, let me know. I don't care how tight their lips are sealed. I always have a way to crack them open and get the information we need. strength would lie in the hands of a Foxian war slave. So decisive. So brutal. She is more like a descendant of Duran than we who have fallen to our current state. No wonder the warhead has his eyes on her. The sneak that infiltrated the Shackling prison. Mokhtok, you are harder to kill than a cockroach. But the fact that you have willingly shown yourself saves us some time. It is not too late for you to surrender. Tell me, 
Where are Hule and Jiaocho? <laughs> Save your energy, Yao Qing monkey. There is one principle that we beasts know well. It is that we might have to break off an arm to break free from a cage. Today, I will be that arm. I lived as a hunter for many years. Yet I have only followed the warhead for this recent, brief period. However, his existence has brought light back to our once blind eyes. Like the moon of Verdantia. He has shown me the way. The descendants of Duran have abandoned the Wolf's Creed. In order to ensure our survival, we took solace in the shadows and fed on one another. We were no longer wolves. We were no more than rats, living a dirty and pathetic Pathetic life. Thanks to the gift granted to us by Lord Hule, I have shared his vision and his blood. The descendants of Duran should live for the victory of the pack, and they should die for it as well. Come, the Ching Man. Show me your faith. We will fight to the death! Puh. How honorable, you mangy dog. But you seem to have misunderstood. There will be no fair one-on-one -on -one duel. Let's see how tough you are once we've put you down. <laughs> No matter how heroic your sacrifice, there is no honor in your battles or deaths, Borison. It seems that Mock Talk got what he wished for. Hule, your declaration of war is over. From now on, no matter where you run, General Fei Shao will catch you and send you to the same fate as Mock Talk. <laughs> your tongue is sharper than your claws. Don't stand in my way, child. Have your general speak with me. Our little hunting game is not over yet. Stand down, Wanza. I am here, Hule. What do you wish to say? The Merlin's Claw. <laughs> Though we have never met on the battlefield, I have heard many interesting things about you, from both my men and your healer. The people of the Sinjo must be quite brave, to allow a foxy and war slave with boars and blood to ascend to the position of general. Has no 
anyone ever question that lineage of yours? Or could it be that your grand achievements were enough to convince everyone to keep their lips sealed? Claiming to have family ties with the enemy sounds to me like an attempt at asking for mercy. Hule, are you begging me for mercy? I see that it is not only the ruthless blood of a wolf that courses through your veins, but also the cunning blood of a fox. When you think about it, this was a gift from the Borison. Anything that we gift, we are also free to reclaim. The Merlin's Claw. I shall extend a final invitation to you. I will be waiting for you on the Sky Splitter. Before you arrive, I will slaughter all in sight, allowing the Crimson Moon that has fallen dim for over 700 years to once more come to life. I will illuminate this ship with the sheen of blood and show everyone just how and powerless the Xiang Chu is. Then I will pilot this ship through every blockade and barrier you have prepared and begin my journey home. This ship shall be the flagship for the Borison Resurgence! Before I finish these tasks of mine, you have a chance to stop me die at my hands. <laughs> this is the path that I have prepared for you. I accept your challenge, Hule. Because the very moment you stepped aboard the Sky Splitter, you stepped onto your path to ruin. I'm entrusting you not only with the honor of the ring, but also with the security of the Sky Splitter. That's easy for my grandfather to say. But this mission doesn't seem so simple anymore. The first round of the tournament is about to begin. I wonder how Yan Qing and the others are doing. According to the plan, I should seek out the Cloud Knight soldiers aboard the Sky Splitter and see if they've discovered anything. Maybe I should take a moment to meet with March before the tournament starts. March is in the contestants' lounge right now. I wonder how her preparations are coming along. Hmm? Mm -hmm. 